Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. So scientists from Witz University and others have identified the suspected space junk that fell over the Eastern Cape on Sunday morning as a meteorite. Eyewitnesses saw and some even took videos of a streak of bright light in the sky over St. Francis Bay. Professor Roger Gibson from the Witz School of Geosciences says based on scientific assessment, the incident is consistent with a rocky asteroid about the size of a car entering Earth's atmosphere at a very high speed. Gibson joins us now to expand on this. Uh, Professor Roger Gibson, thank you so much for your time. As uh, we expand on this matter, we know that eyewitnesses saw and some even took videos of a streak of bright light in the sky over St. Francis Bay on Sunday morning. We're now learning that the space junk that fell over the Eastern Cape was in fact a meteorite. Perhaps let's start right there. How does one define what a meteorite is? Thanks, Simpo, and uh, uh, hello to everyone. Uh, a meteorite is a piece of rock that clearly does not belong on Earth, that has come from beyond Earth, that now lies on the Earth's surface. So uh, it's the end product of the migration of a rocky uh, a part of another planet or one of the asteroids in the asteroid belt uh, that has come through our atmosphere in a very fiery and destructive way and has somehow survived to end up uh, residing on the surface. We know that the last meteor fall in South Africa occurred in Lichtenberg in 1973, which of course is an indication of exactly how rare they are. What have you recorded or perhaps even heard about the incident that occurred on Sunday? It's the, just, just to um, uh, clarify, the, 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 a meteorite fall is one where a meteorite is retrieved after it is observed to fall in this fireball type way. Mm -hmm. uh, most meteorites are found as finds, so only about 2% of meteorites that have been recovered on, on the planet are regarded as falls. So the last fall we had uh, has, was, was, was observed in Lichtenberg, as I said, over 50 years ago. There have been other meteorites found since, but we don't know when they fell. Mm. So in, in, terms of, in terms of this event, what we're seeing, uh, obviously beautifully captured on, on the, uh, uh, on, on the uh, uh, screen, uh, is the fireball coming in and it breaking up and individual pieces of it starting to, to drop down towards Earth as it as it uh, flies through the atmosphere, uh, and people people noted the fireball. Now, one of the one of the strange phenomena uh, around this is that the fireball is completely silent to people on the ground, because it is an act, it's actually happening incredibly high up in the atmosphere. Probably what people were seeing was sitting above 30 kilometers altitude, which is about three times higher than a plane and a jetliner would fly. And so people think of that silence and and then move on. And a minute or two or three later, we'll be hit by the massive sonic boom that is created by this uh, object as it's punching through the atmosphere. It's moving at about 20 kilometers uh, or so per second when it enters the atmosphere. That is absolutely phenomenal speeds. It's over 70,000 kilometers per hour. And the atmosphere is slowing it down as the atmosphere gets denser and denser towards the ground. So we get this 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 thunder, this rolling thunder that happens. Um, so we we have these two sets of uh, witness accounts: the eyewitness and the ear witness. Uh, some people didn't see the the fireball, but they they, they had this sudden shaking of the ground and and thunder in their ears uh, related to, to the same phenomenon. I know, Professor Gibson, that you and your colleagues at WITS uh, are keeping a close watch on the fines and the falls in the country. Of course, uh, with some reports that someone's found several fragments of, of a meteorite, how would one know that they've made a finding and perhaps also explain what the next steps should be when one has perhaps thought that they have made a significant find? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the, the principal uh, way to try and determine it would be uh, to find evidence of this fiery passage. So as the, as the meteor uh, comes through the atmosphere, it, it's rubbing against the, uh, the molecules of the atmosphere and it heats up to such an extent that it starts to melt. And so you get what we call a, a melting fusion crust that, uh, that forms on the outside. And this is typically a very thin millimeter thick uh, layer of, that looks quite glassy and shiny, at least when the meteorite lands initially. But the interior of the meteorite will then be very different. Um, 
Uh, in this case, it looks like the, the, uh, the meteorite is quite, uh, quite light gray colored inside. Um, and to the unpracticed eye, it might not look very different from certain types of rocks on the Earth's crust. So mm. there are many meteorites that people bypass on a daily basis that have they're just lying on the Earth's surface. And I think South Africa is definitely underrepresented in terms of the number of meteorites we should have in our, in our country. We've only got 51 confirmed, and we should probably be at five, ten times that number if we, if we, we set up dedicated search patterns. So the fusion crust is the, is the first thing. And then uh, um, in, in addition to that, although we, we will not uh, um, encourage people to use magnets, please do not use magnets on them, uh, because these rocks are, are, are built in outer space where there's no oxygen, we tend to get what we call native metal, which, which can be very magnetic. And so that's a way to do it. But we've now discovered uh, scientists can, can get a lot of information out of uh, meteorites by studying their magnetic patterns. Uh, so, so we're we're hoping that uh, we'll find uncontaminated and and, and um, pristine samples from that. Mm. So, so you and your colleagues at this stage have not made any findings since uh, learning of of the strike. Well, I can just say, watch this space because literally we're we're just over thirty six hours from from the initial event. It was reported on social media, and we've been uh, frantically, frantically networking. Uh, and getting things in place to, uh, uh, to to pull all the different reports together, and uh, obviously um, uh, we're, we're pursuing several leads. Yes. So we're hoping within the next uh, 48 hours or so we'll we'll definitely have have more news for you. As you pursue these leads, I do understand that we're speaking about a very serious matter here. That uh, meteorites uh, meteorites are items of national heritage. How significant is such a find in terms of scientific value? It depend. Uh, about about 90% of all meteorites are what are known as ordinary chondrites, and, and, the, and the name probably gives it away. They're quite, they're quite ordinary. Mm -hmm. They're actually the oldest materials in the solar system, but they're so well studied now. Uh, we, we, we hope every time we hear of something like this or find a meteorite that we're, we're dealing with the minority cases, because there are so few of those around that every new one is actually a, a potential for some new dimension of our solar system's composition or history, and particularly our solar system's birth. So there are fragments from the moon, there are fragments that have come off Mars, uh, and then there are these fragments from the asteroid belt where uh, bodies that tried to grow to planets like Earth failed uh, and, and have been bombarded and pummeled and, and pieces are now migrating through space and eventually being captured by planets like Earth. So. We, we are always optimistic that, uh, that, that we'll, we'll find something and always very hopeful that we'll find something intriguing and new that will grab world attention. Mm. What myths and misconceptions do you think, Professor, you would like to demystify at this point in time for those who may think that uh, an alien invasion out of space is what occurred on Sunday um, in the Eastern Cape? Well, uh, yeah, I, I think we're seeing um, the particles, uh, th th there's definitely things that landed somewhere on, on the land side. There seem to have been some particles that splashed down in the sea. And I know that many, um, many Hollywood blockbuster movies would, would, would take that sort of aspect and, 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 and show high speed objects coming in and then hiding themselves. But, but, but fundamentally, we have a natural process here. We have about 10 to 50 meteorites per day that land on Earth's surface, and all of those will be fireballs. We only tend to see them at night. Uh, we are very excited about this one because it actually happened during the day, which tells us that it's a bigger one, and there's more chance of it not melting up or completely disintegrating in the, up, in the upper atmosphere. Uh, so first and foremost, let's, let, let's look at science to solve the problem and, ex and explain what we see before we jump to conclusions about uh, something um, quite, quite, quite out of left field to try and do it. And I think that's, that's our job as scientists is to provide rational answers for what we see, constantly being on the alert for phenomena that, uh, that we get uh, a few, only a few chances to study. Mm, very well. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, hoping to speak to you soon about the exciting finds uh, on the ground. Dr. Uh, Professor Roger Gibson there speaking to us about uh, meteorites. Of course, uh, what we saw, um, some eyewitnesses and earwitnesses in the Eastern Cape.